Worship him. Lift your two hands to heaven and worship the Lord tonight. Give him praise. Use the next 60 seconds and give God some praise. From the depth of your heart, just bless him. What a good God we serve. Father, take all of your glory tonight and share it with no man. Blessed be your name, awesome God. Blessed be your name, awesome God. Is anybody worshiping him tonight? Oh, Prince of Peace, the CEO of this universe, the beginning and the end, El Shaddai, Elohim, El Jibo, the one that was, that is, and that is to come. Take all of your glory and share with no man tonight. We return all of the praises. Thank you for your faithfulness over us. Thank you for your faithfulness over this church. Thank you for your faithfulness. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name. I said in Jesus' precious name. Can we be seated for, for a few moments? Thank you. Thank you. Can we be seated for a few moments? Can you reduce it a little bit? Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody excited in this house this night? Amen. We are celebrating his faithfulness. Anybody excited for his faithfulness tonight? Come on, lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah. It's, my, it's a great honor for me to be here. I... I did everything I can to make sure that I am here tonight. Uh, this should be my, this will be the second time. And um, to, to God be the glory for the privilege. The last time it was a good time together. And this time I strongly believe that it will be a better time. Anybody in agreement with me tonight? Can you say a better amen? One more time, a better amen. amen. One more time, a louder amen. amen. Praise God. I want to thank uh, Pastor G.D., you and your wife, who's been phenomenal, especially in this part of the world, for the work that God is doing through you. We are so proud, and we are privileged to know you and to meet you at this point in time, and we are so, so grateful for every opportunity and honor we have to relate, it's quite, it's been quite um, a time knowing both of you awesome people, oh, people of God, JCCI, Glory Tabernacle, can we celebrate your pastor? If you can, come on, I'm talking about your pastor. Get on your feet and give God a big hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. I strongly appreciate I strongly, strongly, strongly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, Dr. Mike, when I saw you at the front, I asked myself, is that not a trouble for me today? What will you tell your teacher? That's a problem. I knelt down. I said, God, only grace and help is what I need here today. Praise God. He's one of the fathers in the land, and we honor him. But Mike, we honor you tonight. It's quite an honor. You know what you mean when your father is sitting down to listen to you? And they didn't tell you ahead of time that he was coming. <laughs> At least if they had told you, you would have extended your fast. You know, or give an excuse for coming late. But I'm glad that, um, thank you so much, sir. We honor you and the work that you have done, the seed you have sown in this land. We are seeing the evidence. Our Papa here, the say that only fools can doubt proof. We have seen the proofs. There is no need to doubt it. God bless you, sir. And we honor you. Amen. 
And of course, my own brother and his wife is here today, Pastor Pius Okugie. God bless you. Thank you for supporting us tonight. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I had to wake him up early this morning by 5 to get me off from the airport. I just came in from Lagos, and I had to wake him up. I know you were snoring when I did that, but I'm glad you did. I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Amen. And some of us have hearts, and some of us, our heart is not here again. Some of us, our heart has been stolen. Some of us, our heart has been captivated. Fifteen years ago, a human being took my heart from me and has kept that heart for 15 years. Amen. Praise God. She was my girlfriend and became my fiancé, and today she's my wife. Amen. She's here with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate my baby. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I told her tonight you are going, you know. I will not go alone this time. You're going, I'm glad you came with me. I love you. God bless you. Amen. Can we stand in a minute and read the scriptures? And I want to recognize all the leaders of this ministry supporting the man and woman of God in this place. I celebrate you, man of God. Thank you so much. I celebrate you. Amen. And all of the leaders. Amen. Praise God. Send to your feet in a minute. I like to stand when I read the word of God. If you don't mind, give me a few seconds and I'll get you seated one more time. And I am going to take one portion of the scripture. I want to take the second king, chapter 4. I uh, may not play around this, the first king, chapter 17. But let's do first, second king, chapter 4. Is that okay? Let's go to second king, chapter 4. Give me, can I have it on the screen, please? Second king, chapter 4. I want to read verse 1, and then I want to read verse 2. And thereabout, we can go ahead and do what God wants us to do tonight. Second King chapter 4. I better look for mine. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Second King chapter 4 and verse 1. And now there cried a woman, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant. My husband is dead, and thou knowest that my and thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bond men. And Elisha said unto him, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had nothing in the house except a pot of oil. Except thy handmaid has nothing in the house except a pot of oil. Tonight I want to preach a message in a few minutes that I titled, What You Have Is All You Need. Amen. Lift your right hand with me. Let's pray. Father, as it pleased you that you brought us together on this mountain. You've not called the house of Jacob to seek you in vain. We are not here in vain. Breathe over your word. Help us where help is needed. Amen. When you teach us, we shall be taught. Amen. If we learn on your feet, we will never suffer defeat. Amen. Lord, I ask you for one thing tonight. That you will help me to say the right things. Amen. Let your word find entrance into every heart here today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And give you all of the glory forever. In Jesus name say amen. amen. Help me tell somebody on your way down. All you have. All is all you need. All say it to another person. Say all you have. All is all you, all you need. Please be seated. Thank you. 
Let me begin by making a profound statement that that, that desired miracle, that miracle you are expecting is not in what you lost. It is in what is left. Your miracle is not in what you lost. It is in what you left. What is left, not what is lost. What she had was not enough for her, not because what she had wasn't enough, but because she was not seeing enough. When you see enough, you will have enough. And so when I studied that part of the scripture, I, I wrote a book on that particular scripture from verse Verse 1 to 7, from nothing to abundance. I'll take a little extract from it tonight. When I studied that conversation, do a little eardrop between that woman and Elisha. And she said to Elisha, this is all I have. Her problem is not that what she had wasn't enough. Her problem is that she was not seeing enough. What you see is what you get. Oh, God called Jeremiah one early morning and said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see a rod of an almond tree. He said, no, you've seen well. And I asked myself, why would God even tell Jeremiah you've seen well? It means that if Jeremiah has said, I see a rod of an oak tree, it is possible that God would tell him, you didn't see well. How did you know who saw well and who didn't see well? Because whatever God is asking him to see, he had already seen. But I studied further, and I discovered that it wasn't about Jeremiah's sight. God was concerned, or was trying to find out not how accurate Jeremiah's sight was, but God was trying to find out where Jeremiah was seated. The law of perception says where you sit determines what you see. So if you're not seeing rightly, the issue may not be your sight. The issue may be your position. So when God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? He wants to make sure, that Jeremiah, I want to make sure that we are on the same page. Because if you sit where I sit, you will see what I see. If you're not seeing what I'm seeing, it's, there may not be anything wrong with your sight. But there may be a problem with where you're seated. Maybe Zacchaeus have a better understanding of positioning. Maybe. When he heard about Jesus and understood that if I stay where I am, I may not see what others are seeing. I may need to change a little my position, move from where I am and move to a better position so I can see better. Think about that for a moment. That we can go through the same situation and react to those situations differently and have an entirely different outcome 
not because the situation was different, but because our position was different. Oh, Jesus, I was listening to you. You raised the offering. You talked about 5,000 men that Jesus had to feed. Follow me closely. He said, there's five loaves of bread here. In other words, when they came to Jesus, they talked about availability. What was available was what? And yet Jesus did not panic. He did not freak out. He asked everyone to come down. Be seated because you're about to be served. Jesus wasn't seeing availability. He was seeing possibility. Follow me closely. When the woman was talking about except a pot of oil, she was seeing availability, not possibility. Okay, Jesus was on his way wherever he was going, and they came to him and said, His friend Lazarus was sick. And he delayed another two days. And then another news came. He's dead. And Jesus got up and said, Hey, gentlemen and ladies, let's go. We're going to wake him up from a nap. Everyone else was seeing him dead. But Jesus was seeing him. What you see is determined by where you are seated. Both this woman and the woman in 1 Kings chapter 17... We are seeing their situation from a place of pity and not a place of purpose. Every time you look at your situation from a place of pity, the only thing you are looking at is the magnitude of the problem. And the impossibility of the issue. But when you find yourself in a place of purpose, that's when you begin to see every situation as a step forward. No, you didn't get that. If you are looking at situations of your life from a place of pity, All you will see is depression, disappointment, failure, God's delay, according to you. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing like delay in the diary of God. I know some of us have made statements. We've been taught that God delay is not, that God can delay, but he is short. That is fallacy. God does not delay. He's a God of time and on time and point. The reason why we ever associate the word delay with him is because we are timing God with this. God doesn't wear this watch. Hello? He does not wear this watch. And yet you want to time him with this watch.
when you find yourself viewing the situation of life, dealing with the challenges of life from a place of purpose, that's when Romans 8.28 comes alive in your life. If I'm seeing what I'm going through from a place of purpose, it means that everything I'm going through is going to work out for the fulfillment of that purpose. I may not have it now, but I am part of God's plan. Somebody say amen with me. But widows, their problem was they were seeing life from a place of pity. No purpose. Once you're seeing life from a place of pity, all you deal with is availability. But when you begin to see life from a place of purpose, you will see possibilities, not availabilities. That even though it may not be available now, but it is Oh, come on, talk to me. It is. It may not be available, but it is. So it's not about what is available, but it's about what is possible. Because availability has to do with man's effort. But possibility has to do with God's ability. And God's ability is without limit. Man's effort has limit. Are you with me here? Yes, if you see an availability and run your life and drive your life with availability, you'll be limited. But when you drive your life with possibilities, that's when expectations begin to become your driver. Yes, oh, some lives are driven by expectation. While others are living by experience. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Some lives are driven by what? Expectation. And while others are driven by experience. If your life is driven by expectation, that's when you live a hopeful life. That's when you live with a life knowing that the best of your life is in the rest of your life. Because the experience has to do with what has happened. So the woman's one challenge that I want all of us to learn from here is that she was seeing life from the place of pity. And so her positioning was wrong. And so because of her position of being wrong, she will end up seeing wrong. That also relates to our praying. Am I preaching tonight? Yeah. You know, when it comes to prayer, we have prayer points. And then we have praying point. They're not the same. Prayer point. And what? Prayer. Praying point. Prayer point is what you are praying for. Praying point is where you are praying from. Your praying point is more important than your prayer point. But yet many of us carry a notebook of prayer points. Notebook of prayer. Everywhere they go, they, they call prayer point. They write it down. <laughs> Anyone that has to do with your enemy. <laughs> You are missing the point, though. You can have all of the prayer points. If you don't make your praying point right, uh, your efforts are useless. Listen, where you're praying from is more important than what you're praying for. You are either... You, you get... You get you, you're sleeping and there is a noise in the house. All of a sudden, you saw a shadow. And you got up. And you remember the last prayer point that Pastor Jida laid in the prayer in the church. And you took off. 
I command every strength prayer. This is, you are praying, you are, listen, you know you have the right prayer point, but you are praying from the wrong point. Because you are praying, you are praying from the point of fear. This is the victory that we have, even our faith. We are more than conquerors. Be ye of good cheers, little children, for I have. So therefore, we are overcomers. You pray from a place of victory, not a place of fear. Because we're not fighting for victory. We are fighting with victory. We have it. The way you pray is determined by where you're praying from. In my latest book, I wrote this one. The prodigal son came to his father. His father means he is what? He is what? Son. Don't talk to me now. Are you not following at all? If he come to his father, it means that he is what? A son to the man. Isn't that? So he came to his father as a son and asked for what is his because he is, that's the position. There are servants in that house. There is no servant that will come and ask the father for inheritance. Not because they can't speak right English. But because they are not in the position of sonship. If you, if you pray, that's what Jesus said to the disciples when they asked him to teach us to pray because John the Baptist taught to pray. He said, when you pray, say it this way. Our Father. Because the place of relationship is where you pray from. And the prodigal son demanded what belonged to him because he was demanding from a place of sonship. But then later on, when he has wasted all he collected, he said, if I go back to my father, I will lose my position. I will now come to the place of servant. It's not what you pray, but where you're praying from. The woman kept bugging Jesus. He said, my daughter is sick. Come and heal her. He said, I have the bread that belongs to children, not dogs. So the question I'm asking you, where are you praying from? From a place of, do you have a relationship with the God that you're praying to? If you do, then you will know that everything you're asking him for, are part of the package that was recorded in the scripture that God has given us all things. Apathetic. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, all things have been given, which means what you're asking for had already been given. The Torah chapter 2, it said to the Israelites, saying, when you cross the door, go, and I've given this land to your father Abraham, but contend to have it, which means it's your own, but fight to have it. Two, 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 two different ways to fight. Fighting for something that you don't know who, who owns it. You're fighting for ownership. It's different from when you're fighting for your own. When you see your son, somebody is molesting your son or, 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 or abusing him or dealing with him, you'll fight like it's your son. Huh? No matter how holy and anointed you are, the way you fight for your own son, you know how you fight for another person, no? You will fight because you're a Christian. No, this you're doing is, is illegal. You, can, you can't treat the boy like this. No, he's somebody's son. He's not your son. <laughs> no, you can't talk to him like that. He's somebody's son. But if you don't, oh, no, no, you can't talk to my boy like that. No, he's my son. A, you, can, you, you can't achieve the same result. Amen. Amen. Ask him for what you don't even know who owns it. And ask him for what you know is yours. A few days ago, I was in Asaba, and I had an, a, a conversation with a group of people, and I said to them, if two of you are walking on the street and you found, and, and all of a sudden, one of them say, oh, I just found 10,000 naira. 
Oh, I just found 10,000 naira. Two of you are working. And you're friends. And you found 10,000 naira. And now you remember you had 10,000 naira yesterday. And you don't know where it is. <laughs> like, you cannot remember seeing it this morning. <laughs> what will you tell your friend? No, 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 that money is my money. No, 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 please. Give. Let me have it, please. He said, no, it's not your money. It's your name written on it. You will turn tiger all of a sudden. You know why? Because you know it's yours. You apply for it. But if you never had anything like 10000 and you know, you never had anything like money and two of you found that money, the way you approach it will be different. You say, I, I will see. Now, this is not two of us, so. You must give me my share. You see the difference here? God said, God had given us all things. So what you're asking for, God has given it to you. So you ask like you have it. But if you don't understand that positioning, let me leave there. Come, let me go back to my message. Praise the name of Jesus. And so asking, let's move from the place of pity to the place of purpose. Why am I saying it? I'm saying this because everything that is happening around you, to you, and with you, it's for a purpose. Amen. It's for a purpose. Amen. That guy walked out of your life for a reason. Amen. She walked out of your life for a reason. Amen. They fired you from that job. Because God was tired of you being an employee. It's, ready, it's time for you to employ other people. Amen. Are you following me? Because God knows how to take honey out of an eater. That thing that, that thing that came to kill you is what God is going to use to transform your life to the next level. Can somebody believe it and say a better amen? amen? Because what the devil meant for bad, God knows how to turn it around for good. But you must see it from the place of purpose. And don't see like that woman saw it from a place of pity. Where all you present yourself to people is how things are bad for you. Pastoring is not easy. Oh. The only time people call you is when things are bad. <laughs> but when things get good, no, no, no. You call them and say, ah, things, ah, well, thank God. <laughs> because if you ever tell, because in their mind, if they tell the pastor that things are very well, then... You have to contribute to the project more. <laughs> yeah, somebody said to me, he said, the reason you see me, I share testimony. I don't mention anything in my testimony. I code it because I don't want trouble. <laughs> if I say it clear, hey, trouble day. Somebody say Amen. So number one, change your positioning. See life from the place. Where is my timing? Let me be looking at it. Ten minutes more. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, those two women we had an experience were trying to study their lifestyle and their experience and the encounter they had with the man of God. And then we decided to, to zero on uh, the, the woman from Second Kings. But two, one thing that the two servants responded to them was one. Go. He said to this person, go and make for me first. And he said to the other one, go and borrow. There is something about those, that two word, yes. that two letter word, go. What you're waiting for is waiting for you. Yes. Listen to me, nothing moves until you move. He that observed it, the wind shall never so. Things are not moving because you are not moving. Oh, Pastor, what I have is not enough to start a business. Start with what you have. And what's good, properly? The Bible said God will order the steps of a just man, not the plans of a just man. But what? The steps. Until you make a, take a step, there's nothing to order there. We read a scripture in, 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 in the book of John concerning the wedding at Canaan. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus came to a wedding with the mom. And are you following me tonight? Yeah. 
And when they, they ran out of wine, the, the mother said to the, the Jesus, this is the situation, and went to the disciples or whatever he asked you to do, do it. And Jesus commanded one of them, take the, the cup, give me one of those bottles quickly, and take two. Thank you. And give me, thank you. Hi, right, your hand, don't touch my hand, though. Uh, let three shock, don't shock me, no, no, no. Amen. Praise God. He took the water. Here's the thing. Are you following me? He took the water from wherever the water was set in. He said, take a glass of it and go give it to who? To the governor, wherever he was. Now, what they took was what? A glass of water. But what the governor drank was what? Now, the question now is, at what point did the water turn? The wine. If it was when he was drinking it, he would know. We may not figure out exactly the point where it turned. But what I can tell you tonight that that miracle happened in the process. What you're waiting for is waiting for you. I'm talking to somebody now. You have a dream, you have a vision. And you are waiting for everything to be okay for you to make the move. There will never be a time like that. Make a move. That move will make things work for you. The four lepers said, he said, listen, if we sit here, we're going to die anyway. If we move, we'll die. So why don't we die trying? A leper that, had, that, that could make no sound. I don't even have complete toes on this thing. And the Bible says that the, the, that the Syrian, they heard the sound of a great army coming, which means God amplified the little noise. But they had to make the noise for God to amplify it. Do you know that God is waiting for the works of your hand to bless it? And you're keeping your hand in your pocket. God said, when you push it in, and I will do what? Oh, bless you. It's time to go. Amen. I say it's time to go. Amen. Oh, am I talking to somebody? It's time to go. Amen. This is February in the year. The year has just begun. Time to go. Amen. It's time to move. Yes, what are you waiting for? The prophecy has gone forth. You're waiting for the prophecy to come to pass. Pastor, there is something I'm waiting for. Once I see that thing, once I, you will not see it. Oh. You won't, so. You won't see it. You, have, you will not see it. If I'm testing, I first of all feel that I'm testing in my heart and in my mind. And what do I communicate to my body? You need water. And then my body will communicate to my hand. Go get the water and feed me. Not the head again, no. The, the head has done its own. The hand must do... And the hand, if my hand cannot reach to that water, my leg will go. If my leg cannot go, then my mouth will tell my baby, please give me the water. Something else must move in order to complete the process. God has spoken. The prophecy has gone forth. There's no more God that will fulfill it. Though. Now you. It's now your responsibility to make it work. He said, that, that word, thy word is what? Settled where? Yeah. Oh, somebody had to bring it down here now. <laughs> if the word of God is settled in heaven, then it's my responsibility eh, to make it settle here. Yeah. Yeah. You prayed enough for oh. time to make some move. Yes, Lord. Listen, it's time to do some big things here, man. Do some big things. Don't depend on your hallelujah and praise the Lord. God gave you mind so that he can rest. Even with all that, you see disturbing him. You're asking for a job, you have a job. If you don't produce well, they will fire you. It's not enemy. It's not your people from your village, no. <laughs> it's, your, it's, your, it's your ill performance and inefficiency that cost you your job. 
Hello? Hi. I know you don't like that part. <laughs> the prophet said, go! You're sitting too much. It's time to go. The year is beginning. Forget this new year resolution. He said, let's do new year movement. Forget New Year resolution. You have been doing it for 10 years. Let's do New Year movements. You know how long you've been planning to, I will, I will, this year, I will, I will buy a house. Every year, the 31st of every year, the next year, the first, the first day of December of every year, the next year, you have, so this is my year. You even have the sticker. This is my year. And the year will come and the year is going. And you're looking at your year going. <laughs> and you can't even do anything about it. And it's your year. <laughs> All of a sudden, when the year is ending, you stop saying it's my year. <laughs> the next year, you hear it, this coming year is my year. <laughs> <laughs> what? what happened to the one that was yours? Tell your neighbor, slap your neighbor at the back, say, move, 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 move. <laughs> and finally, because of time, in Matthew 12, verse 37, the Bible said, we are justified by our words and we are condemned by every word that comes out of your mouth carries a level of energy. Yes. Yes. Every word carries a level of energy. We are products of conditions. The reason why you dress the way you dress is because of the condition of the weather. When you say this man is blessed, this man is favored, what you're saying is that that man carries a certain condition around him. Until that condition changes, nothing changes in your life. And one agent that can change a condition is the word spoken. When you plant a seed in the ground and the seed is not growing. There's nothing wrong with the seed. When you bring fertilizer, the fertilizer does has no impact on the seed. The fertilizer you put is to is the condition of the, to make it conducive for the seed to be able to grow. The fertilizer has nothing to do with the seed. In every seed there is a tree. But when the condition is not good enough, it won't grow. You put fertilizer there to do what? To make the condition conducive for the seed to be able to grow. There are conditions in our life that are very, very inconducive. If there is any word like that. Yes. Is there a word like that, sir? Yes. Very inconducive. That's why things are not working. You can use your words Amen. to change it. Amen. And stop telling them this is not enough. It is enough. That, listen, Numa said, I have nothing but a pot of oil. No. What I have is enough. What I have is enough. What I have is enough. Now, let me share this quickly before we close. Do you know that even the flow of the oil, would you read that part towards the end of it, verse, verse 6 and 7, about 6, six when it, the, 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 they brought the empty vessel and they shut the door, it was she and the two sons. And one of them was responsible to bring the empty one. She's the one doing what? Pouring. And when she pours, who carries it? The older one will carry. The younger one is responsible to be bringing the tour. And then when she fills it, the older one will do what? Will take it away. Hello, somebody. Are you seeing that picture now? Yeah. And he said, give me another one. He said, eh. Here you go, mom. They pour oil. They carry. Give me another one. Here you go. They pour oil. Give me another one. Here you go. They pour oil. Give me another one. Here is it. Give me another one. Here is it. All of a sudden, give me another one. There is none. Oil cease. 
the oil was listed in. Oil is cheap. The moment he heard, there is none. Do you know what flow you are cutting in your life? By that wrong statement that you are putting in your life. I leave you with these three things. Because of time number one, change your position. From the place of pity to the place of purpose. Number two, take action. Stop sitting. You have all it takes to make it work. And number three, use your words. Rise up on your feet, I'm going to pray. Lift your hands with me. Lift your hands with me. And I want you to pray and say, God, ask me. God, help me, brother. Ask God to help you tonight. Oh, oh God, I give you three points tonight. There might be somewhere that you're not good enough. That there's somewhere that you're lacking. You're missing something. It could be in the position from pity to purpose. It could be in the power of your words. It may be in your inability to take action. That God will give you strength and the grace to make a move right now. That that dream will not die in your hand. I pray for somebody. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I will not stay in one position. I am moving from pity to purpose. I am moving from availability to possibility. I am moving from experience to expectation. Come on, open your mouth and pray that prayer now. Lord, help me to move from pity to purpose. Lord, help me to move from pity to purpose. Lord, help me to move from pity to purpose. Father, I need that courage to make move. I need that courage to make move. Come on, open your mouth and ask God to give you the courage. And pray that the Lord will touch your tongue. With a, with a cloth of fire that the Lord will touch your tongue and burn any negativity in your tongue in the name of Jesus because the power of life and death it lies in my tongue I don't want to be I don't want to be condemned by my word but that God I will be justified by my word let my word not bring condemnation to me but let your word oh God bring justification in the precious name of Jesus Father, we give you praise tonight. We give you all of the glory. And I pray strength into your spirit now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever that has kept you down. That have made it impossible for you to make some move. Even after tonight. I release an anointing upon your life. That will cause you to move from where you are. Whatever that came upon the four leopard. That same is coming upon you now. I said the same is coming upon you now. Whatever that came upon the four leopard, the same is coming upon you now. In the name of Jesus. From this day forward, may whatever you have be enough for you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Give God some praise. Give God glory. <laughs>